Hello and welcome everyone. It's Morgana here with today's watercolour tutorial. Today I will be demonstrating for you this uh, lovely desolate grey wetland scene with three delicate Canada geese flying over some deserted marshland. I'm beginning today with a piece of Saunders Waterford cold pressed watercolour paper. I've got it taped onto my board and I've got my board lying flat on some newspaper. And all I'm going to do here is just tape off the bottom section of the paper. This is going to be the foreground, our little spit of land underneath the sky. We only need a little bit because what this painting is at its heart is a skyscape rather than a landscape. So we want this big old space at the top of the paper to really let that sky breathe. So all I'm doing now is just wetting the uh, top part of this paper really thoroughly. I want to give it a good old soaking as I want to do some lovely wet and wet diffused painting. So I'm really making sure that each part of this paper has got a decent amount of water in it and I'm just going to let it sit for a couple of minutes before I begin painting to make sure the water is beginning to soak in. Now I'm beginning today's sky painting with a colour that you perhaps wouldn't expect. This is light red uh, from the Windsor and Newton Cartman range. You can see it's really been watered down and I'm just sort of dolloping it <laughs> just a little bit off centre here. This is just going to be the basis of our sky. It's so light that it won't actually show through in the finished painting. It's just going to give our other paints that little hint of a glow. I know it looks a little bit strange but uh, if you follow the process, uh, trust me, it, it works. <laughs> And you can see what I'm doing now is painting around the light red using my flat brush. I'm using two colours here. I'm using Payne's Grey and Prussian Blue. I've got them mixed up on my palette, uh, roughly mixed. You can see both colours coming through on my paintbrush. I'm being quite haphazard here about how I sort of put them on. But I'm making sure that I paint carefully around that little red patch and leaving a bit of the uh, white sky to the left of it as well. And I'm going to spray this painting so we get a nice little bit of movement in this paint. You can see it's diffusing already but not quite enough for my tastes. So using my trusting water spray and I just sprayed along that top line of the sky. I'm sorry you can't see it super well, I'm <laughs> trying my best. Uh, but just pulling uh, the board up vertically and giving it a little bit of a shake, a little extra encouragement with the water spray. Of course, it means you will get the water and paint running down. So if you want to keep this bottom part quite clean, then do have some kitchen towel or some tissue or something, uh, even a tea towel or some kind of cloth on hand to just uh, mop up any spills. And now you can see I've just turned the board upside down and allowing it to run the other way just adding a little bit more of this grey mix along that line there to just encourage the paint to start moving downwards. As you can see, we've still got some lovely sort of white spaces in the middle there. And that red paint that we put on earlier has diffused out and turned into just this soft, delicate, uh, almost glow underneath the, uh, the dark grey and the blue colour, which is what we wanted. So now I'm going to dry the painting flat because I'm happy with the shape that I've got in the sky. So no more movement <laughs> for a little while at least. I'm going to let that sit there and just settle and dry really nicely. I've taken the, uh, the masking tape off and now I'm just carefully using a bit of tissue to wipe up the excess paint that we've got there. And whilst the sky is uh, doing its thing, uh, settling and that paint just diffusing even more gently. I'm going to put in some dry brush along this bottom part of the painting. I'm using my large flat uh, wash brush for this. This is a Dela Rowney Aquafine Styflow brush uh, size 2 inches. Uh, it's a really nice brush for doing this sort of work. You can cover a lot of ground uh, in one fell swoop so to speak. And I'm using the flat sort of chisel edge of the brush to begin 
putting in uh, the sort of land boundaries in this wetland scene. So what I'm also going to do using the uh, flat brush is I just want to put a little bit of uh, distant headland, distant tree sort of detail along that top horizon line there. But I want it to be nice and soft and misty, sort of disappearing into the background. So I'm putting it on whilst our sky is still wet. So you can see where the wet paint is meeting the sort of wet paper with the sky. Uh, the paint is beginning to diffuse and bloom upwards following the path of the water and it's softening that line down really nicely. So I'm going to leave that for the moment uh, and just stuff in a little bit more uh, land. Now you can make this sort of distant background as tall or as low as you like. I started off with quite a low tree line uh, before changing my mind and deciding that it needed a little bit more height uh, to just add a little bit more dimension to the composition. So I'm just using my mop brush here to pull the paint upwards a little bit, and just create some really sort of generic sort of distant sort of shapes, tree line, uh, and just move that paint upwards, just give it a little bit of encouragement. You can see how it is softening into that sky, and we're gonna get this lovely sort of misty, distant, uh, distant background shape. So now we've got these lovely sort of distant tree shapes disappearing into our sort of foggy, rainy, grey backdrop. I decided to just come in and soften down that horizon line a little bit. So I'm using a smaller flat brush. This is a 19 millimeter, uh, three quarter inch flat brush. And you can see I've just got a little bit of paint on there and I'm just sweeping it along that horizon line, just gently softening down that line, incorporating a little more color and just gently softening out that horizon. Uh, this flat brush is a really great and versatile uh, piece of equipment as well. It's got a really sharp edge so that if you need to do uh, strong lines, you can use it for that. Uh, but it's also just a really nice sort of shape and size to do a variety of different sort of bits and bobs on a painting this uh, approximate size. I'm just adding a little bit of extra detail into our spits of land here and just really sort of trying to bring this foreground together. I've used a little bit of opaque white gouache that was still on my palette uh, that I've mixed in with the Payne's Grey here and you can see it's created this interesting sort of softer uh, colour which I'm stuffing on over the darker colour that I've already put in, that darker Payne's Grey. And you can see it's adding a little opacity to the land, just a little interesting texture. I'm just able to move it around still with my brush uh, with a little bit of extra water. So now our painting is dry. You can see that sky has stayed almost the same as it was when I laid it down flat to begin drying it out. Uh, we've got those lovely shapes, those lovely patches of light and dark, which I think really uh, give a wonderfully empty yet beautiful uh, feel to this painting. Uh, it's almost a lonely painting, but not in a bad way, I think. Sometimes uh, there is a beauty in the sort of more desolate, grey parts of nature. And that's what we're painting today. So I'm adding some uh, reeds and grasses into our wetland uh, scene below. And I'm using again the Payne's Grey here because they're going to be almost in silhouette against this lovely sort of grey sky. And you can see there's also a technique where you can use the flat of your liner brush to sort of pull interesting details, uh, sort of flat lines out of the uh, this bit of land. I'm layering up a little bit darker Payne's Grey over it to just give the impression of these little bits sort of poking up out of the water perhaps some parts darker than others, 
uh, just to give a little bit of extra interest into this part of the landscape. Obviously we don't need it to be too busy and too wildly detailed because the main focus is going to be that big old beautiful grey sky. Uh, but I'm going to add a decent amount of these lovely sort of tall spindly sort of wetland grasses or, or reed beds here along the foreground. Again just using my liner brush to just gently start putting them in. Uh, you want some really really fine lines and remember to vary the sort of height of them and the angle. A lot of them are of course sort of stern and upright but if you don't layer in a few sort of leaning ones where the perhaps the wind has blown and caught them or they've grown at an angle or perhaps a little frog has jumped on one and broken the stem so causing it to bow down and lean sideways um, there's all sorts of possibilities uh, it's nice to just have a little bit of variation when you're doing sort of grasses like this or reed beds uh, it's nice to not have them all looking too uh, standoffish and formal So just keep going until you're happy with the foreground. Uh, you can see that I uh, put in quite a few extra little bits of grass. I've hopped ahead here just by 10 minutes or so, just so you didn't watch me uh, repeating the same pattern over and over again. But I've just sort of taken the grasses down from the left hand side there, just to move them down towards the centre, just to give a little bit of depth and distance into our foreground. And now that uh, I'm happy with that, that's uh, finished for me, I'm going to focus on uh, the sky again and introduce uh, a tiny stain of migrating geese. So to show the sort of um, beautiful uh, desolation and the sort of vastness of the landscape we've got this big sky so I decided to do some very small geese <laughs> to really sort of emphasize just how big and wide and open this flat plain is so to do the geese I'm doing uh, a horizontal line with my fine liner brush a slightly crooked horizontal line and this little fellow has uh, his wings pointing downwards so I'm doing two small sort of v-shaped triangles pointing down and you also want to put a little bit of extra paint on the end of the horizontal line for the head just so that you know and make sure they're going forward and now for this second goose again you can see i'm beginning with my slightly crooked horizontal line that's the uh, long neck of the goose and the body attached but this one his wings are pointing upwards so again i'm doing two triangles uh, one pointing uh, almost vertically up, uh, that's the wing on the far side of the body, uh, and then one slightly slanted, sort of an isosceles triangle, sort of longer towards the point, uh, slightly slanted away from the head to show that wing outstretched and in motion. And I'm going to do the same process again for number three. So at this point you can of course pop uh, as few or as many birds uh, into the landscape as you please. Um, I chose to stick with just these three beautiful geese as I think uh, it helps to emphasise the vastness of that lovely grey sky with those patches of light. Got a lovely big patch of light on the left there which the eye is naturally drawn to uh, after the geese. Uh, and I think it works beautifully to emphasise the uh, loneliness of this beautiful grey open wetland. Uh, but I did decide to add a little extra detail onto the geese and using my opaque uh, white gouache to add a little bit of white detail just on the necks of the birds and on the wings as well to turn them uh, into the infamous <laughs> Canada geese which we get here in the UK migrating 
uh, around this sort of time of year we get them around the wetlands honking away <laughs> and um, they've got this beautiful sort of white marking these pale rings around their necks and uh, pale barring on the wings uh, so this is my attempt to just give these geese a little bit more definition and really sort of place them solidly in our landscape so here is the finished painting um, if you're interested in painting something similar to this, I will pop my outline for these geese on my Patreon page, which you can find using the link in the video description, where I will also put a complete list of all the equipment and all the sort of bits and bobs that I use for this painting as well. Uh, but thank you everybody for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to uh, hearing what you thought of this painting in the comments below. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me paint on this channel. And wherever you are, whatever you're up to, I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.